do it. So I'll make this side um, more of the shadow. Hey everyone, I am using the Hospital X1D in a studio environment. I know those that watch this uh, channel usually see me outside um, using Wong's beautiful beaches and models uh, to test camera equipment. But I just wanted to use the Hasselblad X1D in a studio environment um, because Hasselblad is really known for great uh, studio image quality. And the model to, or I know we were talking earlier, you don't really consider yourself a model, but no. <laughs> um, my friend yes. that's um, <laughs> going to help me test the um, camera today um, yes. is... Hi, my name is Tossie Castro. I am originally from Guam, um, but I am currently in the state of South Carolina in Greenville, and I am pursuing a degree in health science pre-pharmacy. So I'm back for the summer and shooting with um, James. So. Yeah. And of course, thank you for helping me yeah, out. No problem. And Happy it's to be here. yes, and it's really um, interesting to use a camera in this environment. Yes. And just to see how it picks up all the colors mm -hmm. and all the tonality changes yes. of the colors is yeah. it's really good, mm -hmm. really good quality. I can't wait to see how everything looks on the computer. Me too. Excited. Okay, I know we have um, another outfit change after this, right? Yes, we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll keep on shooting. Okay. The X1D has really great build quality, and if you notice, I haven't been using a strap with this, so it's very easy to handhold in the studio. And as you probably have seen in the video, I'm just handholding it uh, in portrait and also landscape mode. Uh, the weight of this is very easy to handhold. It's only 1.6 pounds or 725 grams. The touchscreen, when changing settings, is very easy to use. But I do know this that the colors on the back of the screen isn't really what you will see or get on the computer. The posing, the facial expressions will be good in photos. Okay, the way I use the X1D in studio is I put on autofocus first. So I autofocus on Tossie's eye make sure it's in focus. Then I press the AF MF button to transition into manual focus. And from there, I just press the shutter button. And it's actually really quick to take photos instead of waiting for the camera to autofocus. Tossie, can you move your right hand where your neck is? Just like that, yeah. One, two, and three. Come on, shutter button. So if I were to change let's say half body, I'll put the camera in autofocus, focus on Tossie's eye, change it to manual focus, press it one time, manual focus, and then just take the shot. And then I can take shots really quickly without waiting for the camera to focus. Oh, you can look away, Tossie, uh, to your left side. Good, one, two, and three. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, focus on Tossie's eye, manual focus. Oh, just press it, focus speaking orange, one, two, and three. And the X1D has 35 focus points. Okay, relax your posture on three, one, two, and three. Nice. But I set it to uh, two millimeter. So actually I get all these different focus points, but I like it small so I can just focus on the model's eye and manual focus, one, two, and three. Okay, you see how easy it is to take the shots quickly. Okay, smile just a little bit, thank you. The first setting that you should change is under display on main menu. It is called exposure simulation and if you're shooting manual mode, which you should be, you should have that unchecked mark. If you leave a checked mark, you're gonna see a dark screen like you see here because my ISO is a 100 and my aperture is a f8, so of course it's gonna be really dark. If you leave it unchecked mark, it's like you're looking through the lens. So the X1D has um, medium format sensor or crop uh, digital medium format. 
It is using the famous Sony CMOS sensor also found in the GFX, uh, Fujifilm GFX camera. Uh, the measurements of that is the 44 by 33 um, millimeter. Uh, the EVF, uh, this is only the X1D uh, Mark I. The EVF is a 2.36 million pixel XVGA screen inside. And it only does about two frames per second. But it's, it's decent for studio. Uh, we're not shooting like fast moving subjects and uh, every time I take a couple shots then that's when Tossie changes um, her pose. Uh, what do you think of the photos so far? I know we've been only shooting for like five or six minutes. Yeah, the quality is really great. Mm -hmm. um, the vibrancy too, it just really captures um, the colors really nicely even though white background yes. and I'm wearing white. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. what I noticed too. It seems to really balance out like the tonality of, because we made this light a little bit more yes. uh, dimmer. Yeah. So like the shadows of on your white top, mm -hmm. it can actually see like the gradients of it. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. yeah surprised it can pick it up really pretty well. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep on shooting. Okay. Very good. One, two, and three. Okay. Sonia, can you fix her on your your left side? One, two, three. And you can one. One, two, and three. Let's get the baby. Okay, we are done with our photo shoot and actually Tossi was the first person to ever use the new flooring. We actually uh, peeled off all the covering of the white plexiglass and we tried to get some shots that show some reflection, but I think the white background and white floor just matched all your outfits yeah, today. Really yeah, really nicely. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think overall about the, the pictures, the photo shoot? Um, overall, it was really awesome. Mm -hmm. I love how all of the photos came out. Um, the pixelation is great. Again, the color vibrancy is mm -hmm. amazing and just very sharp and crisp photos. So I'm really pleased with today. Cool. Yeah. I'm really impressed how the Hasselblad X1D is able to capture uh, your orange top. Mm -hmm. uh, just looking at the, I know I said earlier the screen is kind of off in color and actually yeah. the only real way to check is on the computer. Mm -hmm. But now looking at the back of the screen and looking at your top now, it's yes. very similar. Very like similar. It's, it's almost the same. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope um, we work together again when you come back from yes. South Carolina, mm -hmm. probably next summer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you. We're still running. I'm not sure. I can still keep it up now. When it seems like you have moved on. I've got to try. Let's look at three raw files from our photo shoot using the Hasselblad X1D. All the raw files I'm going to show you have been unedited. If you notice during the photo shoot, I wasn't using any laptop or computer. I wasn't tethering. That's because uh, the studio is not mine, but it is owned by Charles Jung from Premium Art Photo. Special thanks for him for letting me use the studio. And also we were the first to use this new flooring that he installed, uh, like a plexiglass um, kind of white flooring and it keeps everything really clean. And I like a little bit of uh, reflection coming from the white flooring. I don't really like to tether to uh, a computer, I used to do that before, but I just feel like uh, shooting just uh, from the camera itself, saving Im images to the camera, coming home and downloading the um, photos to um, my editing software. And I'm using Adobe Lightroom and I'm going to show you what I do 
when I import the photos into Adobe Lightroom. So for the first photo, as you can tell, zooming in 100% at f8, this lens is super sharp, even sharp at f wide open at 3.5. I usually change the color profile by clicking down here and going to embedded. And if you notice, Toshi skin color changes dramatically. So let me zoom in and show you. It's kind of grayish, dull, profile, embedded, and everything just comes to life a little bit more reddish. In order to get the embedded profile, you have to click this view, and it is actually under legacy, embedded. Then I favorited that, and it goes up here for ease of uh, use, easy, easier to find. And in order to get legacy, you have to click on the plus symbol next to profile browser, manage profiles, and make sure legacy is checkmarked if you don't see it initially. Click save, close, and the next step after changing to profile to embedded, scrolling down here, is the lens correction. You'll notice there's some vignetting from the House of Blog 45 millimeter lens. Once you click enable profile corrections, all that disappears and the image gets slightly brighter. So when going to the next photo, instead of always doing these two steps, I do command C to copy. Make sure treatment profile is checkmarked as well as lens corrections, click copy. And moving on to the next photo here. What I'm gonna do is just control V as a victory and paste it. And as you can see everything uh, comes to life. The orange top uh, Tossies wearing looks kind of orange reddish here. It's a little bit more vibrant as in um, person, real life. But I think I was straight out of the camera, the image quality is pretty good. Uh, the color, the colors are pretty accurate. Zooming in on Tossie, of course shot one to one, but I do notice towards her legging area, there's a lot of moire because this lens is super sharp, very fine um, pattern threads in her pants. And you can easily remove this in Lightroom by going to the adjustment brush. And you just highlight this area here using the adjustment brush and increasing the Mori slider. I usually do about 80, make sure it's all gone. And I click close and see all the bar right here. Click close and it just disappears. Pretty good, uh, quick, easy fix. My technique that I was using uh, where I would, and you can see Garfrey in the background here, I would focus on Tossie's eye then change the camera to manual focus so I can just keep on pressing the shutter button, uh, taking the shots. But the disadvantage of that is when zooming into this photo, for example, I'd actually miss focus. See, it's slightly out of focus here. So I'm thinking either I moved or Tossie moved, uh, but that's why every maybe 10, 12 shots, like this is the next couple of shots uh, from this picture here. I just refocus on her eye with autofocus and press the button for manual focus and just keep on taking shots. So when zooming in, yeah, that's pretty sharp. Very sharp, you can see every single eyelash on Tossie's eye. And her left eye, that's closest to the camera, is not that sharp. Uh, we just have to remember that at F8, uh, converting it to like a full frame depth of field, it's around like a 5.6. So you may need to make your aperture smaller in studio, maybe F13 if you're using this camera. Uh, just to make sure and ensure everything is um, sharp. But by me doing that, I have to increase the strobes in the studio and I didn't want to do that because um, if you're taking shot after shot after shot, the strobes may not have enough time to recycle power and um, power the, um, uh, the, the strobe itself and provide the light that, that you want. So I just kept that F8, ISO 100, I like base ISO for the dynamic range and it worked out uh, pretty well. I think uh, the strong point of the X1D is its portability and size, and it's meant for you to take it outside and take awesome landscape uh, portrait shots, but it's really great in the studio. I mean, uh, just looking at, um, here's a um, edited photo right here. Uh, yeah, this one here. Just looking at the edited final photo where I clean up the background, the floor a bit, and zooming in to Tossie's face, like wow. And then just the colors, coming from this camera and the way the tonality from one shade of orange to the darker shade of orange because I made the um, light on the right side a little bit more dimmer. Um, it's really great. Skin colors too, really nice. 
really liking this camera for studio and also outside. Thank you for watching Guam Photography and please subscribe.